From an early age, Oliver Wallstrom was making hockey headlines around the world. At just nine years old, he scored an incredible shootout goal in TD Gardens. Fast forward to the present, and Wallstrom is the deadliest goal scorer in this year's draft class. Wallstrom spent his draft year playing on the top line for the U18 USDP, going up against the USHL, NCAA schools, and other national teams in various international U18 events. At 6'1", 205 pounds, the right winger put up 48 goals and 44 assists in 62 games, and is ranked 7th by NHL Central Scouting Services for North American skaters. What makes Wallstrom such a highly coveted prospect is his combination of hands, physical attributes, and an elite shot that make him a dangerous scorer from all over the ice. He can beat goalies clean with no screen and has the confidence to look for shooting lanes that others wouldn't even attempt. He is also adept at creating a lane for himself with a skating ability and can fire in stride or off a spin. He has a heavy, heavy one-timer in the Ovechkin spot on the power play as well. Looking closer at his skating, his agility and foot speed is developed enough where he can create zone entries for himself, and when you combine that with his ability to read coverage and shoot for gaps, he is dangerous off the rush. His real strength in skating, however, is his ability to shield the puck using his big frame and long reach to fend off defenders with his right hand. His passing and vision also allow for him to be multi-dimensional, as defenders know in the back of their heads that if they commit to the shooting lane, he's finding a teammate. This facet of his game isn't quite as polished as the rest of his offensive arsenal, but that's really more speaking to the elite shot he possesses more than anything. So with his offensive breakdown, I thought I would take a look at the skills that make him an explosive scorer, showing he is not just a spot-up shooter. Here, Wallstrom corrals the puck below the goal line and does a good job shielding the puck using his large frame and reach. I like how low he goes and drops his right hand, shielding the puck from the defender's stick. He then makes a great move to cut into the middle of the ice by faking a pass to the point and the defender bites. While he doesn't get the greatest shot off off of his spin, I like what I'm seeing. He's creating room and opportunities for himself and for rebounds for teammates. This time USA is on the power play and Wallstrom is in his very comfortable spot at the left point. Again we see him shield the puck effectively by using his long reach, getting down low, and dropping his arm. Wallstrom is great at controlling the puck with one hand on a stick and he's able to pull it back in towards his wheelhouse and fire a quick snapshot off of the crossbar. That is just a dangerous combination right there. Lastly, here's an example of Wallstrom's agility as he breaks into the zone. Not much to dissect here as he uses his speed to catch the defenders flat-footed and it's just important to note that his head is up the entire way as he's making these moves. Defensively, I think his play in his own end is just okay. There's definitely room for improvement, and that should come with time as he develops. He is able to create turnovers with a strong stick, and is already able to win board battles against older players playing in the NCAA. However, one of the knocks against him is that he's been inconsistent with his effort in his own zone. His defensive positioning is sometimes questionable as well. The play starts with all five USA players clumped together in the corner. Wallstrom at this point isn't doing too bad as he's taking up the middle of the ice as he rightfully should because there's no other USA player there. However, watch what happens next. As the battle along the boards increases, Wallstrom starts puck watching and gets sucked in. I don't understand what he's doing here, where is he going, who is he covering. The puck is starting to go below when he's up high about to come to the left side boards. Keep in mind, he's a right winger. The other thing that's driving me insane is that he's just gliding around the ice. He should be stopping and starting in his defensive zone. Somehow, him gliding around on the opposite side of the ice that he's supposed to be on works out for him as he's the first man onto the puck as it goes back to the left wall. But then watch what he does next. He brings the puck around the boards to the right side and that's just where hockey sense has to come in. There is no one over there. In fact, he's supposed to be over there. This prolongs the defensive zone shift and gives the Czechs another chance to score. I get it, he was tired, he was at the end of his shift, I would have just rather seen him spun and fired it high and hard off the glass and out. With the video breakdown now out of the way, let's take a look at some of Oliver Wallstrom's stats. When looking at Wallstrom's season, we see he ranks 7th all-time for the U18 national team in points per game with 1.52. Keep in mind that Austin Matthews, Jack Hughes, Phil Kessel, Jack Eichel, Patrick Kane, and Matt Kachuk all did this in their draft minus one season, but still, pretty good company. 
Looking at how Wallstrom got his points, we see that 57 were even strength points and 74 were primary points. From this perspective, it would appear that he created a lot of offense for himself. When we take a look at percentage of total team goals created, he was in on 28.48% and personally accounted for 14.86% of his team's total goals. He averaged an extremely high 4.95 shots per game and carried a 16.4 shooting percentage. If we go a bit further, however, looking at what happened once Jack Hughes joined the team, things get a bit more interesting as the duo formed quite a potent line. The potential first overall pick for next year, Hughes was playing for the U-17 team to start the season until being called up for game number 27 of the U-18 season. Looking at this graph, we see Wallstrom after game 26 posting a lot more three-point games than before Hughes became his center. Wallstrom recorded 62 points in the remaining 36 games, and of those 62, Hughes was a part of 43 of those so 69.3% of those points. Hughes ended up with 68 points for the scoring lead. Jack Hughes was definitely the catalyst, and it was pretty apparent when you watch the clips. Now, I'm not saying this is a fatal flaw with Wallstrom, as he did carry his weight and not only produced, but also created for himself, and really, they made each other better. I'm just saying his numbers should be considered alongside of the Hughes impact. Lastly, let's talk about some stories that show why Wallstrom is the player he is today. Being labeled as a one-trick pony at the age of nine didn't make it any easier on the blossoming hockey phenom. Since his insane shootout goal, everyone in the New England minor hockey circle knew who he was. That includes players, coaches, and parents of competing teams and instead of succumbing to the negativity that followed, Wallstrom used it as fuel to become even better. From his father, other teams would target him on the ice and that helped him to be quicker, be faster, work harder to survive. From this, he was now used to being placed under a microscope and learned how to cope valuable skills for any professional athlete. He would go on to attend Chituck St. Mary's Prep, a hockey program known for developing some of the game's biggest stars like Jonathan Tays, Zach Parisi, and Sidney Crosby. All throughout his process of becoming the player he is today, he's kept in mind the values that his dad has instilled in him as he came up the ranks. An emphasis was placed on working hard and having fun, and by only worrying about that, the rest would follow. He has a good head on his shoulders and seems very self-aware of his game, his strengths, and his weaknesses. Scouts have labeled him inconsistent and poor defensively, and just like when he was nine years old, he was able to take the criticism in stride and use it as fuel to get better. Going to Boston College next year will be a good test and allow him to grow all areas of his game. While he's played center in the past, the entire time in the USDP, he played on the wing, and I think that's where he's best suited to maximize his strengths. Wallstrom is an elite talent, and whoever lands him on draft day will be getting a big 30 goal scorer that can make players around him better as well. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please let me know by leaving a like as it really helps me out knowing if I'm doing stuff right or wrong. And please go and check out the designer of today's video's thumbnail, Bungie Designs. A link to his Twitter and Instagram will be down below in the description. If you're new to the channel, please consider hitting subscribe as um, I'll be doing uh, hopefully some more draft stuff up and after the draft. And yeah, I'll see you guys hopefully tomorrow.